Well, we was this week marks the uh, unprovoked Russian invasion of Ukraine, and today uh, we are joined in by the ambassador of the European Union to India, Ugo Astuto. Hello, sir. Very welcome to ETV Bharat. Uh, well, as we know that, of course, uh, tomorrow uh, we are going to complete one year of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So, my question to you is: How do you see the situation changing, and also the fact that the uh, the Russians are becoming more aggressive, which has become a global concern and a threat to international security how do you see this coming and uh, you know given the fact that how are you handling the situation on the ground thank you well as you say tomorrow we are going to mark a very sad anniversary it's uh, one year since this unprovoked and unjustified aggression from Russia to a peaceful neighbor it's it's a clear violation of the UN Charter a violation of uh, international law and by a very member of the UN Security Council, so it's particularly concerning. And on top of it, Russia had also guaranteed uh, the borders internationally defined in 1994 in the so-called Budapest uh, Memorandum. Since then, we have seen an escalation of violence, incredible um, uh, devastation, loss of life, uh, loss of property, and I'm afraid also mounting evidence of uh, war crimes. Uh, we know the name of Butcher, unfortunately, is now known for that. But it's not the only case. Uh, in other territories uh, occupied by Russia and then liberated by Ukraine, we see evidence of uh, war crimes. So, what the European Union, together with its partners uh, and uh, in NATO and allies, uh, has been trying to do is to um, support Ukraine as much as we can, uh, economically, politically, and also through the supply of weapons. Uh, it's the first time in the history of the European Union that we use the uh, EU budget to supply weapons. It's an extraordinary measure uh, which has been dictated by the uh, extraordinary nature of this uh, aggression. Uh, in parallel, uh, we have been uh, trying to isolate uh, politically the uh, Russian leadership. Uh, to make those responsible for this uh, absurd decision accountable. And to, uh, we have imposed um, uh, nine um, uh, packages of economic sanctions already. And there we speak, um, uh, we are discussing a tenth uh, package in Brussels. So the, the purpose of these uh, sanctions um, is uh, largely to, to affect uh, the um, uh, war machine of the Kremlin uh, so that it will not be in a position to continue uh, the aggression and prolong uh, the hostilities. Uh, and I think it's fair to say that these sanctions are biting. Uh, you see the effect on the Russian economy uh, overall and on the capacity of Russia to procure technology. You see shortages of um, essential spare parts now in several key sectors of the Russian um, uh, economy. So the sanctions are working, the political isolation is there. Uh, there has been a large condemnation by the international community at the UN. You may remember the vote um, a few months ago with 141 uh, nations condemning the, the invasion. And uh, the essential feature we, we need to note is the incredible bravery and resilience of the Ukrainian people. And uh, today and tomorrow on the occasion of the anniversary we shall pay tribute to this uh, resilience and uh, commemorate all the innocent victims of the war. Well, um, ahead of the, of course, ahead of tomorrow's uh, anniversary, uh, like, is there any chance or do you see, how, how's the ground situation right there? Because as we can uh, see on Tuesday when Russian uh, President uh, Putin has, uh, during his address, uh, global address, he has actually mentioned how, you know, uh, his country's participation is, uh, has been suspended uh, uh, in a nuclear pact with the U.S. And he says that it, this comes with a global confrontation. How do you see this? How do you see this coming? Of course, do you expect more bombings and how's the situation out there? Well, unfortunately, I, I, I don't think that the statement by President Putin has added anything new. Uh, we have seen, again, more propaganda, more hostility, mm -hmm. uh, more aggression. Uh, it's, it's a pattern, I'm afraid, and that's one of the reasons why there is so little trust left on President Putin as an interlocutor for a, for a peace uh, 
for a peace process. As to the situation on the ground, uh, the, 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 the aggression continues, unfortunately, and the fight continues, particularly in the East now, uh, causing um, horrific losses. And um, uh, it's, it's all the more deplorable that all these basically uh, could end uh, on the spot if the Russian leadership decided to stop the aggression and withdraw and respect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of its neighbor. So uh, my second question to you would be like, you know, we have seen a surprise visit by U.S. President Joe Biden recently to Ukraine. And uh, how do you see this when it comes to what message does it send and uh, what exactly does it indicate when it comes to the entire situation of the conflict? I think it's further evidence of the unity of uh, the U.S., Europe, its alliance with NATO vis-à-vis uh, -vis the Russian aggression. We stand with Ukraine. And we will continue to stand with Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine has a right to defend itself against this illegal and unprovoked uh, aggression. And uh, we shall uh, support Ukraine with all the means we have um, available. Uh, I suspect the, the Russian leadership hopes that there would, uh, would be a fragmented reaction from Europe and its allies. That's not the case. We, we are all in this together and we shall continue to support Ukraine. Well, the fact that Russia has been blaming the West for the conflict, of course, and we have seen the consequences. Uh, how do you see this coming? And also my question would be uh, rather on how India has taken a stand when it comes to the conflict. It has uh, reiterated its stand in different international forums. So is there any talk or any kind of contact with the Indian side when it comes to resolving the conflict? Well, India is a friend and a partner, so talks and conversation are, are continuous. Uh, specifically, we have all uh, greatly appreciated the statement made by the Prime Minister that there is not a time for war. Uh, it, that was a very important statement. Then we have seen also India contributing to the arrangement uh, which is in place to export grain through the Black Sea. So I think there have been various instances where, where India has shown its uh, intention to positively contribute. Um, to a possible cessation of hostilities. Um, we, we, we need Russia to stop uh, the conflict uh, and withdraw, respect Ukraine in its um, um, uh, sovereignty and territorial integrity in the internationally recognized boundaries. Well, coming to one uh, very major uh, issue that the entire global uh, community is actually uh, looking for, looking to is, is, is the China factor, of course, uh, the growing aggressiveness of China and also India's ties with China. We have seen the influence in the Indo-Pacific and there are a lot of, uh, we talk about the Quad, there are a lot of countries coming together to actually counter uh, China in that case. So your take on it, how do you see uh, this country particularly? Well, I, I think that India and the uh, European Union have a convergent view of the future of the Indo-Pacific. Uh, we, we want a region which is peaceful, uh, stable, uh, prosperous, and we have a positive agenda for the Indo-Pacific, uh, an agenda which is um, uh, underpinned uh, by a cooperative approach to international relations, uh, the need to defend the rules based system of international governance. That's why I think that uh, India and the European Union can cooperate well in the Indo-Pacific. This is already happening in a number of fields, uh, not just security. We, are, we take a holistic approach to the Indo-Pacific about how to foster growth, how to achieve a sustainable development growth, how to protect the environment, fight against climate change. So I, I think there is a, a, a very broad and positive agenda that we can pursue together. And also China's ties with Russia in that case, uh, of course, your take on the bilateral, the geopolitical uh, shift that we have seen, uh, particularly uh, arising out of this conflict. How do you see that? Well, uh, let me put it this way. I, I think we have as international community globally uh, uh, the same interest uh, in, uh, in respect for international law in upholding the values and principles of the UN Charter. And that, uh, that is something that should bring all of us together, irrespective of the region of the world where we live in. Right. My last question to you would be, of course, uh, this Russia's unprovoked war against Ukraine has actually led to a global energy crisis and, uh, and highly impacted the energy and food markets, as you can see. 
So, uh, you know, how the European countries are tackling the rising prices and, of course, the fact that the scarcity of, uh, of the supplies and your take on that, basically? Well, uh, this um, inflation in the prices of energy and, um, and food uh, is the result of a deliberate policy from the Russian leadership to play havoc into the international prices, uh, to exert um, sort of blackmail over Europe, uh, which was uh, overly reliant on fossil fuels from Russia. Well, to put it bluntly, uh, the, the era of Russian fossil fuels in Europe is over. Okay. Uh, we have managed already uh, to wean ourselves off uh, gas and oil coming from Russia in a, in a considerable fashion uh, through a multifaceted approach, diversifying Mm -hmm. diversifying the sources mm -hmm. uh, through um, uh, energy savings. Uh, on average, uh, we have uh, reduced by 15% energy consumption in the European Union and accelerating uh, right. our transition towards uh, a greener energy mix. But in the, m in the same time, we are, we are uh, acutely aware of the problems faced also by our friends and partners, particularly in the Global South vis-a-vis -vis the um, uh, inflation, the price of oil and food. That's why we have tried to mitigate these um, consequences of the Russian aggression and its policies by establishing what we call the solidarity lanes mm -hmm. to um, uh, support the export of grain from Ukraine yeah. and the arrangements. And we have also contributed to the arrangements to export grain via the Black Sea. Uh, this has helped in uh, somewhat stabilizing the, 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 the price of grains. Same for uh, energy. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, uh, together with our uh, allies in the G7, we have established uh, an oil price cap, uh, which is meant uh, precisely to avoid the spikes in the oil prices that we have seen earlier in the crisis. And I'm glad to say that we see it is working because the price of oil has stabilized uh, since. But let me make it very clear uh, that there are no EU sanctions on grain or fertilizers. So the spike, the increase in prices that we have been experiencing is entirely due to the Russian aggression. And also the fact that there has been a debate and discussion on the fact that India has been buying Russian oil uh, ever since the conflict happened, despite of the sanctions. And uh, we have seen countries are against. Of course, the West is against it. Uh, your take on that, of course, what do you have to say? Well, I, I think we, we understand and respect the, the position of India, and we also understand the constraints um, uh, India is, um, is, um, is addressing. Um, but we appreciate also the role of India, mm -hmm. uh, as expressed in the words of the Prime Minister, uh, in order to put an end to this conflict. Your, your message, of course, uh, to the global audience, what do you have to say on this particular day? Of course, we have seen the aggress aggression. Uh, last year was a, a havoc for all the, for the entire community. Uh, your take, your message. To well, Russia has to stop its aggression and withdraw and respect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of its neighbor. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for joining us. Uh, this was our European Ambassador to India, and uh, we hope that uh, the conflict ends soon and there, there be peace. This is Chandrakala for ETV Bharat.